Well, brethren, the other day I've got very interesting notes. Uh, they're handwritten notes. They were sent to me by a man who is in Australia, Craig White, a gentleman, an elderly gentleman who has collected over the decades various documents from the WCG, Worldwide Church of God History, and he also collected all sorts of uh, materials. Now, these notes are interesting because they were written in 1974 and 1981, and I don't know who wrote them because there is no name attached to them. They're handwritten again, so I'm hoping to type them out into a word format and uh, share them with you in a written form as well. They're interesting, again, notes because they also are related to the subject that I'm very keen about. And uh, they're entitled The Babylonian Conspiracy in the First Century True Church of God. These notes are uh, also divided into five sections. Uh, four sections were written, obviously, in 1974 and 1981. And then the fifth section was added later. It was added in June of 1988, after the death of Herbert Armstrong. So, uh, for the sake of history, for the sake of interesting information attached in these notes, I just want to share them with you, because I consider them to be quite amazing, interesting, and they will also help us understand better the New Testament history. So here they are. In section 1, it says, if one was to read the New Testament in historical order, which will be first three Gospels, second Acts, third, third General Epistles, and fourth Gospel of John, one would see the following. 1. Life of Christ, his doctrines and gospel, and his persecution by the Jews. Secondly, early years of the history of the F Ephesus era of the true church, of which the earliest opposition was Jewish, opposing the acceptance of Jesus as the Messiah, Judaizers in insisted on observing the rituals of the Mosaic law. For this reason, the early ministry of the apostles put prime emphasis on the replacement of rituals by the Holy Spirit and on the resurrection in fallible proof of Christ's messiahship. See Acts, especially first half of the book of Acts. One would also see number three, in latter part of the Acts, Paul warns of false prophets, Simon Magus ministers. After AD 33, when the apostles encountered Simon Magus, the Babylonian mystery religious Peter or Pope, his work spread, and the opposition to the true church became Gentile. The writings of Paul, some writings of Paul, uh, and first and second Peter, James, first, second, third John, Jude, show that the Gentile opposition was primarily uh, aimed against God's laws. They taught grace was licensed to disobey God's laws. And the fourth thing that one would see if we would read the New Testament in historical order would be John's Gospel. Now the notes are now elaborating a bit about John's Gospel and uh, they're giving us five interesting points brethren about John's Gospel. Point number one about John's Gospel. It was probably the last book to be written before the Revelation. It is entirely different to the all other Gospels. For example, the Gospel of John does not, does not mention the uh, destruction of Jerusalem, already past. It uses certain characteristic words, seldom used by the other Gospel writers, as he is trying to get a message across. For example, the word love, which equals keeping the commandments. Simon Magus ministers were doing away with the keeping of them. Then also the word the, the word the word works, which equals basically the work. Ephesus era was not doing the work, and it had left out, uh, fled out of the promised land, as it is written in Revelation chapter two verses two and verse five. Also the word sent, sent or send, which equals an apostle is one sent. John is saying here that Christ was sent by God and he kept the commandments. In effect, John is saying, I am the last apostle alive. I was with Christ for years. He kept the law, so do I. And uh, get back on the track. And I'm the only one who knows where that track is. Thus the emphasis throughout that is that the members must follow the one sent, the apostle, as or because he follows Christ. At that time, they were following Satan's ministers. Thus, John's gospel was sent to settle problems in the church. Now, the word truth is also often mentioned 
in John's Gospel, possibly because he's emphasizing that they dig, that they should dig into the Bible to see what they are, where, uh, to see where they erred. So, and then in, in parentheses it says John 17, 17, and you might remember it is, you shall know the truth, and you know, the truth shall set you free, and that's what it is. Then what else do we read, or we can glean from the Gospel of John? The second thing we glean from the Gospel of John, it says in these notes, in this Gospel, John wrote the account of Jesus' life, uh, centering it around the holidays because he lived in a time when false Christianity was destroying the holidays and replacing them with pagan days and therefore his account is entirely different to the other three Gospels. Each chapter, except the first and the last, is interrelated with the holidays. The third characteristic of John's Gospel is John shows his authority and then uh, several scriptural uh, references are mentioned here that John shows his authority in John chapter 16 verse 13, John 21 verses 20 to 24, and Revelation chapter 1 verse 2. And the fourth, the fourth characteristic of John's Gospel is it emphasizes the church should be one. And also there is a list of scriptural references from the Gospel of John, uh, John 7 verse 21, John 10 verse 16 and 17. Uh, John 17 verse 11, John 17 verse 21 to 23. When I type out these notes, brethren, I'll, uh, I'll also quote all these scriptures so that we'll have a very clear view of what, what this paper is actually telling us. Again, it is handwritten and somebody was probably jotting down quickly notes. Uh, we don't know from you know what sermon or what teaching or what Bible study, but nevertheless, it talks about the Babylonian conspiracy in the first century true church of God. So that is very important. And finally, the fifth characteristic of John's Gospel, it says, it shows the following, shows former leadership of Peter throughout, also shows that the church is named after the Father, John 17, verse 12. It also mentions persecution, chapter 16. It also mentions light, law, versus darkness, sin. And then it lists here several uh, scriptural references, like John 1 and 9, John 3.19, John 8.16, John 9.39, John 11.22, John 12.46, John 16.28, and John 18.37. So no references are quoted, you know, from the Bible, but we just have the references as they are. Now the second section of, this, of these notes, here is what it says. In the original inspired Greek, each book of the New Testament ends with Amen. Only Acts, James and 3rd John do not. This signifies they were not finished or completed. Amen is of Hebrew derivation. It signifies completion. Each missing Amen is a special sign. It indicates God wants us to understand that certain knowledge was not to be made known to the world until now. In the first chapters of Acts, if the first chapter of Acts had been included, he means if there were those, you know, the not sorry, not the first. If the final, okay, if the final chapters of Acts uh, had been included, he means those chapters that were obviously deleted. You know, final chapters of the Acts obviously are deleted. So that's what he means. If they were included into the canon, so if the final chapters of the Acts had been included, the identity of the true church, whereabouts of Israel and the Babylonian conspiracy would have been revealed. If James had, had ended with the ordinary salutation, the nations of Israel would have been disclosed, and God did not permit John to uh, make known in plain language the names of the leaders of that conspiracy and the city of their operation. We see that in 3 John chapter thir uh, verse 13. I'll just remind you, Third John 13 said, John says, I, I have many things to write to you, but I would, rather, I would rather see you in face and I would rather not use ink to write those things. The notes continue. The missing amen is to tell us to look elsewhere in the Bible for the answer. And then it provides the, f the following scriptural references. Acts chapter 8, Revelation chapter 17, and Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I'll remind you, brethren, just again, if you may not remember what is there. In Acts chapter 8 is the encounter of the apostles with Simon Magus. Revelation 17 is the great city 
which you know fornicates with the world, which is basically the Rome. And Second Thessalonians chapter two speaks about the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, as we call him, who is to appear. Now here is now the third section of these notes, handwritten notes again, and uh, the third section now contain, uh, contains some interesting information for us. Listen to this: the three letters of John parallel the end time church. First John shows how the church was off the track, watering down of the laws, etc. Second John shows how we must not receive those that want to take us away from the truth. Third John shows the church getting back on the track. Now they were written, those three epistles, at Ephesus, the headquarters of that era, after John's exile at Patmos was over. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, John warns that it is a last time and that the end of the Ephesus era was closing in. That was the third section of these handwritten notes, brethren. Here is the fourth section. The fourth section refers to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. There is no uh, text quoted from the Bible, but I might, might remind you, it says, uh, verse 7 speaks about the one who is holding still uh, uh, holding and not allowing the mystery of the lawlessness to be fully revealed. So here is what these notes say. It says, in first century, this could perhaps be referring to the death of the apostles. The, cons the, the conspiracy to take over the church did not gain real prominence until after their death. In end time, now this is, mind you, this was written in 1981 and 1974. In end time, will Herbert W. Armstrong die and Satan will attempt to take over the church? There is a quotation mark in parenthesis and that's it. That's the end of the fourth section, brethren. And now comes, the date is written here, June 11th, 1988. And the note says, above written in 1981, seven years ago. Amazing. <laughs> that's what it says. And here is the additional notes, which is now... Section number five, Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse one through seven, uh, and then in parentheses it says, "Was Simon Magus and his followers the men of sin of first century after the uh, after the uh, let me see after the, the, the this is now hard to decipher this word after the uh, probably dying dying or whatever of Peter, Paul, then John." So that was the question. Was Simon Magus the first century man of sin? Were they taken out of the way, meaning the apostles taken out of the way, permitting the Babylonian uh, Babylonian takeover of the early church? That was a question mark. And then it says, it provides original Greek in the New Testament. says, and now here are just several quotes about uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. The original Greek actually says, Until he be taken out of the midst... This is Bullinger's rendering, as far as I can see in this parenthesis, it says Bullinger. So, until he be taken out of the midst. And also, now here is another quote from another version. Only uh, uh, be restraining now, until out of the midst it comes. Then also amplified version says, but it is restraining only until he who restrains is Restraints is taken out of the way. That's the amplified version. And finally, the last is revised standard version quotation. It says, only he who now restrains it will uh, do so until he is out of the way. And that's the end, brethren, of these handwritten notes. Again, they are very precious. I obtained them the other day. Uh, I obviously enjoy the... Uh, confidence and trust of Craig White and I deeply appreciate that the man who I told you for decades has compiled boxes of documents and he's now trying to make them available and public through his website and therefore I thought these were exclusive notes again they're handwritten I'll make sure that I'll type them out into the word and I'll share you the written uh, the written version as well now, of course, obviously, in the written version, I'll quote all the all these uh, scriptural references so that we'll have a clear view. 
And of course, instead of the in this section four, where it says uh, in end time will Herbert Devil Lassum die and Satan will attempt to take over the church, since we are living in you know in the 21st century and Herbert Devil did die and Satan did try to take over the church, I'll probably reformulate that and you know I'll just say say in end time Herbert Devil Lassum died and Satan did attempt to take over the church and so on. Anyway, this is these exclusive notes. Now we have them in uh, audio format, and uh, I hope that. You have learned something from them, as of course I have learned from them much as well with you.